You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Welcome inside the hump in Starkville, Mississippi for a big time SEC rivalry game. The Stark Vegas crowd ready for the number one team in the nation and defending national champ South Carolina to take on their 12 and two Mississippi State Bulldogs. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us alongside Women's Basketball Hall of Famer Holly Warlick. I'm Brenda Van Lingen. Well, South Carolina has won two of the last five national championships. They're undefeated, going for back-to-back. -back. Holly, you've been part of eight national championships at Tennessee. You know how hard it is to stay on top. What does South Carolina need to do to be the next dynasty? Well, I'll tell you, South Carolina is becoming the next dynasty. You need players to fit your system. Dawn and her staff have shown they can recruit. You need players that are highly motivated, competitive, mentally tough. You need to be dominating on the defensive end and be relentless on the boards. And South Carolina definitely has done those two things. Yeah, they are leading the nation in four defensive categories on the team side. And the reigning national player of the year, Aaliyah Boston, she's leading the team on both ends of the court. Well, she controls and dominates the paint. She draws, you'll see, two or three defenders who try to disrupt her. She still scores. Aaliyah also has the ability to face up and be careful going inside because she has a scary presence in the paint. And Jessica Carter is back this year for the Bulldogs, making a big impact. Well, she's a trim down Jessica Carter. She plays with her back to the basket. She'll face up. She dominates on defense, some really nasty blocks, and she is a dynamic rebounder. She's the anchor for the Mississippi Bulldogs. And we talk about the South Carolina defense, but Mississippi State under first-year head coach Sam Purcell also dominating in defense. They're third in the country in scoring defense and defensive field goal percentage. They're also a good shot-blocking team, so it will be a fun one today in Stark Vegas as South Carolina with their road black uniforms. And the tip goes to Mississippi State and they're in their state uniforms. They're calling them their cream uniforms. Just the second time they've ever worn this uniform as they host the defending national champion. It'll be fun to watch that matchup on the block with Jessica Carter and Aaliyah Boston. The drive, Anastasia Hayes gets things started for the Bulldogs. Just what the Bulldogs needed to do. They needed to attack the paint, get an easy look, got a great layup. South Carolina with their first possession of the game. They're coming off that big victory at home against Auburn before that. They had been behind in the first half against Georgia, but won in Athens as they're 3-0 in the SEC. Mississippi State down in transition. Smith with the shot. You see their starters, Hayes, Smith, and Jordan on the perimeter. Debrisha Poe, the fantastic freshman, coming off a career-high 21 points against Tennessee. And Jessica Carter inside. Yeah, I pay attention to the inside matchup because those are two of the premier post payers in the SEC and in the country. And an offensive foul drawn by Jessica Carter against Aaliyah Boston in that matchup. You gotta love Biggs, Brenda, putting their body right in the way, taking the charge. She makes it look easy. That's a tough competitor right there. Jessica Carter did not play last year, but she is back. She's healthy. She's ready. She loves this new coaching staff led by Sam Purcell. And Mississippi State with an early 2 nothing lead. Smith has missed a couple of shots now for the Bulldogs. And here come the Gamecocks. Here's their starting lineup, who you would expect. Cook, Boston, Saxton, and Beal. And, of course, Fletcher, the transfer from Georgia Tech after... Her four years there, she is running point now for the Gamecocks. Quickly ahead, but giving that one up, Jordan, too much defense inside from South Carolina. It's going to be really difficult for Mississippi State to score inside because they really dominate on the defensive end.
There's Aaliyah Boston cutting along the baseline for the first basket of the game for South Carolina. Mississippi State won their first SEC game against Vandy, but then lost at home to their rival Ole Miss and then on the road against Tennessee. Danae Carter was not available, but we understand she will be available in this game. And another layup for Mississippi State and Anastasia Hayes. She's got all four. You know, Mississippi State's doing a great job of moving the ball side to side and getting open looks inside. And if they can get layups, they're going to take those. Aaliyah Boston got her own rebound on the missed three. Good block out for the Bulldogs. It's very important, Brenda, to watch. Mississippi State has got to control the board. South Carolina has great rebounders, so we're going to see what kind of battle they do against the boards. They've got to control the boards in order for them to stay in this game. Poe, who's coming off that season-high, career-high game as a freshman, the 21 points against Tennessee. Don Staley, reigning national coach of the year has led our Olympic program as the coach, as a player, so many accolades, so much the leader in our sport right now. And Holly, as she talked to you and me about this team and what it takes as Zaya Cook hits a three-pointer just to stay motivated, game in and game out, game out, it was so impressive what she had to say about her players. Well, they take on Dawn's personality. You know, they're mentally tough. They work hard. They practice like pros. They play like pros. They want to go to that next level. And when you have a, a highly talented team, you've got, to mo you, you've got to have a team that's really mindset of their coach. And they are really dialed in to Dawn's philosophy and what she wants to get done for this basketball team. Well said. South Carolina knocked it out of bounds, so Mississippi State will take it. They've driven to the basket several times on the Gamecocks. That time, Alana Smith, the 5'9 graduate, the transfer from Louisville scores. A great sign for Mississippi State scoring inside. It's all been layups, all been from their guards. So great attack to the basket. South Carolina, they had some issues against the matchup zone that Georgia played. They're going to see a little bit of that today, too. Smith against Saxton, and it's knocked out of bounds. 19 on the shot clock. Sam Purcell in his first season at Mississippi State, his first season as a head coach, as he's been the last nine years at Louisville under Jeff Walls. He's been mentored by Nell Fortner at Georgia Tech. He's worked for Joe Champy. I mean, he's worked for a lot of great coaches, Holly. <laughs> yeah, that that's a great resume, and I love what, what Sam's told us. He's, I, we said, why come to Mississippi State? He said, because it's got a great environment, and they love women's basketball. Well, they sure do, as they'll see a free throw here as Kiara Fletcher commits the foul. So Anastasia Hayes, who started her career, you know her well, at Tennessee, transferred to Middle Tennessee, was the Conference USA Player of the Year, and now making her impact here. Well, here's our Big Ten ACC Super Tuesday men's college basketball doubleheader. Number 14, Wisconsin, hosts Michigan State, who won six straight at 7 Eastern. Then 11th-ranked Virginia hosts North Carolina. Both games are over on ESPN, and the app should be good games. And Mississippi State goes back to their matchup zone. And, uh, and a matchup's really, a, it's a man that's got man-to-man -man principles. They're trying to make South Carolina make shots from the outside. Saxton there with the offensive board. Boston cleans it up and ties the game. And that's what South Carolina does. They dominate the boards. They may miss their first shot, but they're going to get the opportunity for the second and the third shot because they're great, great rebounders. Get in position early. All tied up here in the early going as we approach our first media timeout. Next dead ball. 
after Kayla Jordan wow. and Holly. We've seen a lot wow. of layups against this tough South Carolina defense. Kind of surprising. Yeah, I, I said earlier, I said it's tough to score in the paint. Well, Mississippi State's making it look easy. They're doing it with their guards, not, not post entries, but guard play. And they clear the rebound. Don't allow South Carolina to get an offensive rebound that time. And then the score driving hard okay. at the basket is Poe. <laughs> okay, Poe. She's a freshman, Bruni. She doesn't really know. She's not sure about Aaliyah Boston. It's the first time she's <laughs> seen her. <laughs> she took it right at her. And then Zia Cook answered back. So timeout on the floor. The ball will belong to Mississippi State when they've come, when we come back. Already 10 points in the paint for Mississippi State as they lead by two in the first quarter. Welcome back to the hump. Mississippi State with the early lead, 11 to nine. And Holly, they've been fearless. Freshman Debrija Poe took it right at Aaliyah Boston. You got, you got to love it because we talked about Aaliyah Boston's presence inside and she's just fearless. Attacks and we, and teams to South uh, Mississippi State do they attack they try to control the tempo right now they are attacking and they are scoring in the paint all of their baskets have been in the paint all their field goals and this is a team in South Carolina that keeps teams out of the paint typically teams only shoot shoot 32 percent in the paint against them so a very good start for the home team. Jaquela Jordan, the transfer a couple years ago from Tulane, splashes home a long range shot. And great side for Mississippi State. If they can hit outside threes, uh, they can draw South Carolina away from the basket, help maybe open up the inside a little bit more. Zaya Cook. Had that big 31-point performance, a career high against Georgia earlier this week. So Holly, the first 10 points on field goals came from the paint. Then Jordan hits a three for Mississippi State, but misses that one. And then a turnover well, by South Carolina. Yeah, they, they've got to establish an outside presence, Brendan. Mississippi State's not going to, South Carolina's not going to allow them to keep penetrating into the lane, but they've done it with great ball movement, great player movement, and it's kept South Carolina's defense a little busy and preoccupied and less worried about the ball. So Jessica Carter will take a seat, making Mississippi State a much smaller team. Asia Nate Johnson, number three, steps in at the point guard position. But you can see how much smaller Mississippi State is right now. They are, and they're still attacking. And, and South Carolina is long and lengthy and athletic. And uh, you can see the defensive presence they have. Under the basket, a wild shot. And excuse me, Charlotte Cole, 6'5", junior from Germany, is in the lineup for Mississippi State, spelling Jessica Carter right now. A miss from the perimeter for South Carolina. And into the game, Courtney Weber knocks down a three. That's the second three-pointer of the game for the Bulldogs. Well, that's what makes it difficult. You hit threes, you're gonna bring the players out and, and loosen up maybe for Mississippi State inside. And a foul on the drive to the basket. Well, smart move by Cook. She's she's taken a couple threes, hadn't hadn't made the shot. So what does she do? Put it on the floor and draws the foul, goes to the free throw line. So the foul on Cole as Jordan walks away from the court. Zaya Cook at the free throw line, an 80% free throw shooter. 29% so far from the field. South Carolina shooting just four of 14. On the other side, Mississippi State has hit five of their last seven. They're shooting 54% against a South Carolina team that holds their opponents to just 26.8% typically. 
And then you now see right there the, the game. You see the presence, Brenda, of, of, of South Carolina's defense that's disruptive. They got it inside and uh, couldn't finish it. The offensive rebound by Camila Cardozo, and she is fouled on the floor. So the foul is on Courtney Weber in South Carolina with 113 in the first quarter. Will inbound it on the baseline. Ami here puts it on the floor. Short gets her own rebound, tries to clear some space, finds it, and scores. Yeah, that's that's what South Carolina does right there. They may miss their first shot, but they're going to go rebound and put the second shot in. That's what makes them so dangerous. you got to finish Holy your defense with the box out, Brenda. Absolutely, and it's amazing. South Carolina, their offensive rebounding percentage is 49%. That means they rebound half of the shots that they missed. Just incredible. Wow. Hey, throw it up because I know I'm going to get a second shot with the rebound. South Carolina to Cardozo. Misses, but they're right there for the rebound, but stepping on the baseline is Raven Johnson, and it will be Mississippi State basketball. Look at the opportunity they just had of possibly getting the other rebound right there. Sam Purcell's team off to a great start. Largest lead so far in the first quarter, an eight-point cushion. They've got a five-point lead now as the shot clock is off. Hayes, little hesitation move wow. all the way to the hoop. So impressed with how Mississippi State is attacking the basket. Mississippi State with the 19 to 12 lead here at the end of the first quarter in Starkville. Well, Mississippi State's getting it done. They're driving to the basket. And what does Kayla Jordan do? Shoots a three, putting Mississippi State ahead of South Carolina Gamecocks. Mississippi State up on the number one team in the country, 19 to 12 after the first quarter. It's the second most number of points scored on South Carolina in the first quarter. Stanford scored 21, Mississippi State scored 19. And Mississippi State is playing with no fear. They're attacking the basket. They're getting buckets on layups, taking the ball inside. And when they don't do that, they're shooting uncontested three-point shots. And so they're, they're putting the numbers up on South Carolina. Today, shooting 50% from the field. This is a good shooting team, but even better than normal as Anastasia Hayes leading the way with seven points. Weber has three, and both Smith and Poe with two. Jessica Carter hasn't even scored for Mississippi State, and they're leading 19 to 12. Yeah, and she's their leading scorer, so Mississippi State is, is really doing some great things on the perimeter. South Carolina on their first possession. Leticia Ami here commits an offensive foul, and it will go the other way. Yeah, again, just getting your body in position, taking them square on, and uh, just great opportunity and great defense for Mississippi State. In this series, South Carolina has won the last four games in a row. It hasn't been since 2019 that Mississippi State has won. The steal and a score for Raven Johnson to give them their first score of the quarter. And there's that presence, Brenda, of South Carolina's defense. Great ball presence, great ball oh, pressure. And Hayes had an open look on the reverse layup, but missed it. Will South Carolina make them pay? Beal out on the perimeter. Again, Holly, how much of this, this zone defense is it difficult for South Carolina to crack here? Well, it's active. It's an act. It's not just a two, three setback and we're going to run a zone. It's a matchup zone, a lot of movement. You've got to move the ball from side to side. You've got to play inside out. And it's, it's causing a little havoc for South Carolina right now. 
But another offensive rebound for South Carolina, their seventh. Ami here grabs it and draws the foul on Jessica Carter. It's her first foul and will send Ami here to the free throw line. Mississippi State's got to find a way to just keep South Carolina off the boards. They are so relentless on the offensive boards. Well, tomorrow, TCU takes on Georgia, the defending champs in college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. We'll have pregame coverage all day, but for this matchup, we'll have you covered from every platform, TV, radio, and digital. So many ways to watch and listen to the biggest game of the year. Looking forward to it, Holly. I think we're going to talk about our picks a little bit later. Yeah, good, looking good quarterback just, matchup. Love it. I, I just, uh, I can't wait. And another basket in the paint, this time for Smith. And... Mississippi State just keeps attacking, Brenda, and, and South Carolina, is, it's, uh, they've got to come up with how to stop it. Raven Johnson buries the three. That's the second three-pointer of the game for South Carolina and draws them within two. It's, it's good to see Raven Johnson back on the floor. Last year she had an ACL. She was uh, player of the year nationally as a, uh, coming out of high school. And uh, it's so good. It's a great competitor. She is really going to make a presence and a difference on the South Carolina team. Turnover for Mississippi State. So South Carolina now with a chance to tie it or take the lead. Yeah, it's good to see Raven Johnson back. And as Don Staley talked to us about her, you know, she's learning so many things this year that she would have won, uh, learned last year. And so just, just catching up, but you can tell what a special player she is. Yeah, and I love, she said, she's got to learn to kind of pass within our offense. Uh, so she, she uh, just learning the game. And sometimes you got to take a little off your pass. You've got to understand who can catch it and who can't. South Carolina has missed seven of their last nine, now eight of their last ten, but another offensive rebound. That's what's keeping them in this is their offensive rebounds, and then the three-pointer goes down. And that's what South Carolina does. That was, what, two, three offensive rebounds, ball reversal, gets it to your three-point shooter. It just breaks your back. Zaya Cook now with nine points for the Gamecocks, and again... Alana Smith making it to the rim. The transfer from Louisville came over with Sam Purcell to join this team. And a foul on this end will send Boston to the free throw line. And friend of South uh, Mississippi State, they got a little bit of hesitation in their drive. And it's, it's causing South Carolina just to hesitate just a little. And then they're able to blow right by and take it to the basket. So this three-pointer by Zaya Cook gave South Carolina the lead. Alana Smith answered right back to take the lead back for the Bulldogs. And then South Carolina goes inside to Boston. The foul was on Poe. National Player of the Year last year. To me, most impressive. She was the academic All-America Player of the Year last year in all sports, male wow. and female. So not only does she have all these incredible basketball accolades, but she takes her academics very seriously in the Academic All-American of the Year. Well, she has carried the torch in every way for South Carolina since she's been there and uh, just continues. She's gotten better and better, and uh, she's developed her game bringing her game from the outside instead of saying in. So a great candidate for player of the year. Cardozo with the steal ignites the break and then it's knocked out of bounds by Jerkayla Jordan.
Sam Purcell saying you've got to be tough. Talks about how, how tough it is to win at all, to win in this league, to try to knock off the number one team in the country. Mississippi State has only done that once in all of their years of playing number one teams. They played the number one team in the country 16 times. The only time they got a victory over the number one team in the country, everybody remembers it. It was ending UConn's 111 yeah. game winning streak in the semifinals of the NCAA tournament in 2017. Then these two teams matched up in the national championship that year and South Carolina won it. Well, it, this is a storied program and it's got great history. And uh, coaching in the SEC, it is tough. The SEC is hard. It's physical, it's athletic. I don't care who you're playing. I don't care if you're the bottom of the league. You better be ready for everybody when you step onto the court. Spoken like somebody that has, that has <laughs> been in the SEC all of her life, right? Oh, you just can't let your guard down. It's just, you you just mentally, you're at, the players got to be tough. Coaches got to be mentally tough as well. You got to prepare like every team is ranked number one in the country. Raven Johnson breaks the tie to give the Gamecocks a two-point lead. It's actually their biggest lead of the game. And a timeout by Mississippi State. Sam Purcell steps on the court and calls a timeout. South Carolina has come back and taken the lead after being down by seven at the end of the first quarter. Thank you, Andrea. Andrea Carter in the studio today. Glad Love to hear Andrea it. Carter. I know, we both do. We both do, for sure. South Carolina up by two. They're on a nine to two run. And the shot clock winds down for Mississippi State. So turnovers have been an issue in the last few possessions. As we look at the series, South Carolina leads the series. They've won four in a row, but Mississippi State is 11 and seven here in Starkville. The last time they met last year in January, South Carolina got the 12 point victory. Yeah, it's a tough place to play. The crowd's into it. Uh, they're close down to it near the court. So it's, it's a big advantage for Mississippi State. And me here, Long Cardoso can't grab the rebound. Cardoso and Boston both in together. Uh, can there be a more formidable duo inside <laughs> than wow. Boston and Cardoso? Yeah, they. Uh, that's just that's just size on size, and uh, it makes it very difficult inside to score, to rebound, uh, to defend. And they, and they were in together. They're not now. I apologize, but Cardoso is. And the turnover for South Carolina. Mississippi State really needs a basket. When they do, they go to their freshman, Debrisha Poe. Poe po had Cardoso in her face and made the play. Great concentration. A much-needed three for Mississippi State. What a big-time player Debrisha Poe is already and will be in SEC play. Cardoso there with the offensive position. What great position. Just just push Carter under the basket, and there's not too much Carter could do. Carter's got to get position before the ball goes up and push Cardozo off the block, but couldn't do it. Mississippi State has lost two in a row. They lost at home to Ole Miss. They lost on the road to Tennessee, but they are playing well in this game. That shot blocked. Cook turning on the jet, scoring, and will go to the free throw line. Nice, great attack. South Carolina stops them, and then what do they do? They get a defensive stop, and they come down and attack the basket, and Cook does what she does. Here's the block there, and they just immediately turn and get into their offense, and she just great crossover, attacks the basket, gets the end. So the foul on Danae Carter. And Zaya Cook at the free throw line to complete the three-point play short. Johnson pushing ahead for Mississippi State. We've already had seven lead changes and three ties already in this game. 
This is a great rivalry. I know it has been, hasn't been the same the last couple of years. Vic Schaefer leaves to Texas. Nikki McRae was here for a year and then steps away last year. They had an interim coach last season, now a new coach in Sam Purcell. So it, it's been different for Mississippi State, but there's still, there's still this rivalry. Well, it is, and you, you change coaches, but you still have that commitment from the university, from the fan base, and uh, Sam will get it back on track, and he's got a competitive team, an experienced team, a team that has put in a lot of minutes. Smith short on the jumper. That one gets away, and then a turnover. Wow. This sloppy play for South Carolina. Well, <laughs> Mississippi State is just not taking advantage right now of these mishaps by South Carolina and uh, trying to take it inside. And it's just they, they've got to move the ball around and hit some mid-range jumpers right now, Brenda. Timeout called by Sam Purcell. South Carolina holding on to a three-point lead. That's what Don Staley thinks of it. South Carolina with the three-point lead over Mississippi State. We're in Stark Vegas. The crowd is out and supporting Mississippi State in their great effort against the number one team in the country here in the first half of play, just 155 remaining in the second quarter. Along with Holly Warlick, I am Brenda Van Lingen. And Holly, what stood out to you so far? Well, I think both teams are playing solid defense. Mississippi State, take advantage of what you're getting South Carolina to turn it over. Mississippi State is now going too deep in the paint, and they're going to have to hit mid-range jumpers right now. They're going to have to hit three-point shots. South Carolina, just keep doing what you're doing on the defensive end. Keep rebounding. Their offensive effort and, and putbacks is really putting uh, South Carolina ahead of the game right now. Jessica Carter misses on what would have been her first basket of the game, and then she picks up the foul. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't, going for the ball, competitive, rebounding. I'm sure the official had a little bit better angle than I did. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe, but it, you know, that's the number one rebounder in the SEC. Jessica Carter is a, a terrific rebounder. She number one shot blocker, I should say, but a terrific rebounder. And, and she's got to be a little bit frustrated because she hasn't been able to score yet. And she picks up her second foul. Well, oh, misses that one. Brenda, a credit to South Carolina's deep. They're not allowing Jessica Carter to get any easy look. She's having to work for any just slightly touches. And so mm -hmm. when she gets the ball, they've got to be valuable possessions because they are just all over her. Aaliyah Boston back in the game. She's got just five. What a nice pass across the baseline of the defense. Ashlyn Watkins, the freshman, into the game. Well, that's a great play. If you watch it back, you'll see Boston screening the middle of the zone. And what do you do? You The backside comes over to ball side. They make it look easy, but that is a scripted play that South Carolina does all the time. Now, let's take a look at it. So you'll see the ball go there. Boston, you see right there, screen in the middle, and the other post comes across, makes it look easy. Great design play and a, and a, a, a good basket before the half. Ami here picked up the second foul. Ashlyn Watkins, Watkins is such a talent. She's already dunked this year in a game. So athletic. And Don Staley told us she would be getting a little more playing time today because of how hard she's worked in practice the last couple of days. Hey, but just what an unbelievable athlete. Turnover for Mississippi State. Cook misses, offensive rebound, and there's Watkins again, and she's fouled and will go to the free throw line. Well, when Mississippi State misses, Brenda, they've got to get back on defense because South Carolina's attacking and everybody else just follows the play. Okay, Cook missed the rebound, and what do they do? Follow it up with an offensive rebound, and now they're at the free throw line. Yeah. 
Watkins misses the first free throw. Well, the SEC Network has Georgia covered tomorrow before, during, and after the college football national playoff game presented by AT&T. Our pregame show starts at 8 a.m. Eastern and takes you right up until kickoff. Then watch the game here with Scott Howard and Georgia's radio team finally wrap up this unforgettable day with the SEC football final with all the highlights, interviews, and a complete game breakdown. We've got you covered for the biggest game of the year. So many ways to watch it. Just have to choose which one, right? <laughs> just watch it. Just watch it, that's all. All right, just a, a one second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Mississippi State needs a score and the shot is missed and then a foul away from the ball on South Carolina will give the ball back to Mississippi State. South Carolina is on a seven to nothing run right now. Well, great idea for South Carolina, uh, Mississippi State. They attacked the bus and kicked out, got a good look and just got a foul on the, on the weak side rebound. And then a foul on Mississippi State. So a missed opportunity as Carter picks up the, uh, excuse me, a turnover on Carter. Last possession for South Carolina. Cook hanging in the lane, no. Watkins can't track it down and South Carolina will go to the halftime locker room up six in Starkville. Yeah, Zaya Cook, she is putting on a show today. She's doing everything. She's scoring a three-point shot, making it look easy, and she's attacking the basket, doing everything she can to keep her Gamecocks in the lead. to Starkville, Mississippi as the Gamecocks were down by as many as eight in the first quarter, but went and beat Mississippi State 20 to seven, outscored them in the second quarter to lead at the half. We saw scoring on both ends, but the scoring has slowed down for Mississippi State here at the end of the second quarter. Yeah, Brenda, Mississippi State is just needs to keep attacking the basket. They've missed some easy shots, but got to keep driving to the basket. Well, welcome back to Starkville, along with Women's Basketball Hall of Famer Holly Warlick. I'm Brenda Van Lingen. So we saw that Mississippi State team come out and attack the basket, as you said. But what does South Carolina need to do against this stingy zone defense for Mississippi State? Well, great ball movement. You can still screen the zone. So set a couple of screens, set a low screens. They got that easy basket early. Just keep it. Their biggest thing, Brenda, is keep dominating the boards. And they have been doing that. South Carolina, 11 offensive boards have led to 12 second chance point. It's not a huge headline because that's what they do all the time, but that's made up for their poor scoring in the first half. A nice backdoor cut and score for Alana Smith to draw Mississippi State within four to start the third quarter. Zaya Cook, the leading scorer yeah. for South Carolina in the first half, misses. Saxton misses again and a jump ball. Possession arrow will stay on this end. Yeah, good to South Carolina. <laughs> Two offensive rebounds right there in the very first possession. You can see how South Carolina, even though not shooting well in this game, and nine more shot attempts in the first half because they have 11 offensive rebounds and 12 second chance points. Zaya Cook fouled on the shot, doesn't go in. She'll have two free throws. You just cannot, you cannot foul a jump shooter. It's, it's just the, a, a cardinal sin. And uh, that was a difficult shot that Zaya Cook looked like she was attempting. She got bailed out by the foul. The foul was actually on Alana Smith as Zaya Cook 
makes the first free throw. Zaya Cook in the first half, 11 points on 4 of 13 from the field. She made a couple of three-pointers, and now she's 2 for 4 from the free throw line. And makes that. Holly, South Carolina, led only by as many as six points. That's the biggest lead. They're tied right now with their biggest lead of the game. Haven't been able to stretch it out just yet here in Starkville. Oops. Mississippi State has done a really good job of not panicking because South Carolina is just all over the boards. And Mississippi State's been really smart, but their defense has been really, really solid. If they can kind of corral the offensive rebounding of South Carolina, they could be tied or, or, or be moved ahead. So Saxton committed the foul on Jessica Carter. Carter, the leading scorer on the year for Mississippi State, has been held scoreless in this game. And then on this inbounds play, another foul committed on South Carolina. This time on Fletcher. And then another missed shot at the rim, this time by Jerkayla Jordan. So opportunities for Mississippi State. Carter blocks it. Here come the Bulldogs. All the way to the rim. No, a lot of missed shots in the paint where those were going in early. They're missing now for Mississippi State. Well, that's a shot Mississippi State has to hit. You've got to make layups. You've got to make layups and free throws. You've got to make these layups. Take and advantage Boston. of what you did on defense. And Boston is struggling as well. Two for eight now for the reigning National Player of the Year. Big step through blocked by Boston. So Jessica Carter, we talked about this, this matchup between the two bigs. They're, they're canceling each other out right now. Well, they are. That's the first time Jessica Carter's really gotten the, gotten the ball on the block, Brenda. And, and uh, Boston, what a great presence inside on the defensive end. Well, short corner shot makes that one go in. Three for nine now for Boston. She's got seven. So what does Boston do? She's not being successful on the block, and so she steps out and faces up, and that's the part of her game that she has taken to another level. Three-point attempt from Poe short. That rebound, Holly, that Aaliyah Boston got just moments ago has helped her break the school record for most rebounds in SEC play as she passed Elena Coates, now has 600 rebounds in her career in conference play. There's another. Well, she just... She does an outstanding job of just getting early position and great re rebounders rebound out of their area. She moves, she gets position, and so you should not be surprised that she leads South Carolina in rebounds. Carter rebounds for Mississippi State. Can they get her going? Matched up against Aaliyah Boston. She's going to come out and set the screen for the Bulldogs. Boston just pokes that one away from behind. Well, Carter's got to get a better presence inside. She's got to be big. She's got to want me to throw the ball inside. And you can't do that standing up. And Carter's standing up. And Boston very easily comes around there and deflects it. So a foul called on Poe. That's her second foul. And it will send Zaya Cook to the free throw line. And a timeout called by Mississippi State. So South Carolina, low scoring third quarter has outscored Mississippi State four to two in the quarter. They lead by eight. South Carolina up 36 to 28. You can see all the Mike Leach tribute t-shirts and the, the social media message, when you come to the legend's house, you pay respect. Just real classy move from South Carolina to honor the late Mike Leach. I, I love that. And uh, coaches supporting coaches. And uh, Don knows the, the impact that Mike Leach had on, on his football teams, uh, especially Mississippi State. And uh, wow, just going to be greatly missed. For sure. Well, coming up at 3 Eastern over on ESPN, we'll take you to Cincinnati for number two Houston taking on the Bearcats.
So Zion Cook at the free throw line, able to give South Carolina their biggest lead of the game, a nine-point lead with six and change here in the third quarter. Mississippi State started off this game so hot, they scored 17 points in the first eight minutes of the game. They've only scored 11 since then, make that 13, and that's the first basket of the game for the leading scorer on the year for the Bulldogs, Jessica Carter. And that was a design play coming out of, of the timeout, and, and Carter, she didn't, wasn't on the block, she turned and faced and uh, scored from there. So she's having a hard time scoring on the block. So what does she do? She turns, faces up, and gets a bucket. You know, it's interesting because Don Staley talked to us about the fact that both Aaliyah Boston and Cardozo working on that because even Sylvia Fowles, the great Sylvia Fowles, <laughs> steps out and hits a mid-range jumper. So we see that from Jessica Carter. That's a great example of when you're not shooting well around the basket, just getting a shot. Well, and touching the ball, and people are really keying on those low post players because they're so effective inside, and uh, it's great to see her extend her game. So Anastasia Hayes brings Mississippi State within five, a little 4-0 run for the Bulldogs. Fletcher, no, and the Bulldogs get the rebound. Got a little bit of a momentum swing going here. We'll see what Mississippi State can do with the ball. Poe picks up her dribble. Saxton steals it. Boy, the, the length of South Carolina. God, and great, great awareness by Saxton. I, we haven't said a lot about her name, but she does the little things. And right there, just defense and getting in the passing lane and doing those intangibles that you're not going to see on the stat sheet. Rebound by Jessica Carter, can't get it to go. Boy, that would have brought this house down there just waiting for something to cheer for here in Stark Vegas. Boston missing, so Zaya Cook and Aaliyah Boston missing on back-to-back -back possessions. Mississippi State closing in. Well, we've been wanting to see Jessica Carter and she goes to work and what does she do? Faces up. She's making it look easy. She needs to be a guard. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. We are at the hump in Starkville, Mississippi, and we talked at the beginning of this game, these are two of the best defensive teams in the country, so we shouldn't be surprised. But South Carolina, it's a season low 27% from the field, but they still lead by five with 420 remaining in the third quarter. Well, South Carolina seeing a matchup zone that they don't see very often. And what it does, it takes away your inside shot. So it puts a lot of pressure on your outside scoring. And Mississippi State's really challenging South Carolina to make some shots from the perimeter. Asian A. Johnson into the game for the Bulldogs. Misses that jumper. Raven Johnson onto the court for South Carolina, running the point. We mentioned she was out all of last year with a knee injury. Knocked away by the Bulldogs. They've got a wide open court ahead, and they draw within three with the Johnson layup. Great job by Mississippi State guarding that play where they wanted to go inside. They, they read it. Uh, they took care of the low post, and... Uh, Boston turned it over. Zaya Cook puts it on the floor. No. A 6-0 run for Mississippi State, but a foul called. And we talked about the screen across. They screened across. Mississippi State went with Boston. And what do they do? They turn it over. Great defensive uh, stand by Mississippi State. Yeah, I'm sorry, it was a kicked ball, not a foul. And South Carolina goes to Cardozo, and she is fouled. South Carolina, Holly, has missed, oh, has missed all of their last seven shots they've attempted, but with the foul here on Carter, her third, they get an opportunity to go to the free throw line. 
they haven't allowed South Carolina to make easy shots, meaning wide open shots. Every shot right now for South Carolina is being contested. They're having to shoot over the defense. So it's making it difficult for South Carolina to score right now. Cardozo missed the first. You mentioned earlier that this is the lowest shooting percentage of the season for South Carolina. Their season low had been against South Dakota State. Just 27% today against this stingy Mississippi State defense. And then Cardozo misses both free throws. Mississippi State with an opportunity to draw within one or tie on this possession. And a yeah. foul away from the ball call. Mississippi State right now needs to take advantage of their great defense they're playing on the other end. How can they capitalize on, on their, their play on the, on the defensive end? So the foul on Zaya Cook, it's her first foul, but she will take a seat. Hall into the game for South Carolina. So they have Johnson, Hall, Beal, Cardozo, and Boston on the court right now defensively. Jordan hangs. It's a one-point ball game. Wow. <laughs> Here comes the crowd, Brenda. The crowd's going to be in play because that is a loud place to play at the home. And they are chanting defense, and then a foul called on Jessica Carter on Aaliyah Boston in the paint. But let's take a look at that last play. Well, attacking, and she doesn't go too far. She got, takes one more dribble too close to the de defense. So one dribble pull up. That's a high percentage shot for her in the paint. Kayla Jordan now with seven points. Nobody from Mississippi State even in double figures, but they've got good balance. Boy, and that's a foul on the rebound, but are they going to call that on Mississippi State? Yeah. Cardoso reached up over a lot of contact, and the foul is on Mississippi State. Well, that, that don't fall Cardoso because she's tall. Look who she's rebounding against. So I, I think Mississippi State, they're calling, probably backing into uh, Cardozo when she's going up for the rebound. Are, are you are you sticking up the, for the officials here, Holly? Well, uh, it's hard. <laughs> Brenda, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> uh, I know it's you know, hard I, for I you. Don't, I'm Mississippi State. I, I'm, I'm the crowd. I'm going nuts. But I, I think it's, it's the right call. You, you, you can't just punish a kid. If she's tall, she's got long arms. See how she's leaning back. That I don't know if they caught it on the rebound. I think they caught it on the putback. And that's why you see she went to the line for two shots. All right, so Carter picks up her fourth foul. Cardozo misses the first free throw, makes the second to bump it up to a two-point lead. South Carolina, their largest lead of the game was nine. Mississippi State led by eight points, but that was in the first quarter. They miss a chance to tie it up here, and here come the Gamecocks. Man, you can look at the battle inside. It's just those posts being physical, going at each other, and, uh, you know, it's, it's basketball. It's SEC basketball. South Carolina, you saw the graphic there. They've missed their last eight shots in a row. Raven Johnson misses that one. Mississippi State trying to pop block out. Raven Johnson has the ball blocked. That time by Charlotte Cole. And Boston looked like she got away with a little, little push inside. So uh, let's pay attention to that, that battle in the paint. Anastasia Hayes back onto the court, replacing Asian A. Johnson, the transfer from St. Bonaventure. Boston. Misses, gets her own rebound, scores, and is fouled. Well, that's just, it's difficult when a post player attacks the basket. What if she misses her shot? She's right there to have a putback, so it's... Uh, there's nothing too much that the defense can do. She misses, gets her own rebound, puts it back. And a three-point play completed for Aaliyah Boston. She's now 
nine points and or excuse me 10 points and 12 rebounds on the day so another double double nine on the year for Aaliyah Boston that, that's a good day at the office I think <laughs> kind of a <laughs> typical day at the office for Aaliyah Just, Boston right exactly Cole going to work on Cardozo and yeah. then a travel called it will be South Carolina ball and Cole's got to just kick it out and repost and just uh, she was pushed away from the basket and I'm not sure Cole's comfortable being pushed off the block just kick it out and repost and get a deep berry try to get closer to the basket she's a junior from Germany she only averages about seven minutes a game was giving Jessica Carter a breather so Carter back in Carter just with two points on one of five she's the leading scorer on the year for Mississippi State but she's been kept in check it's been a defensive battle between these teams the pass up over the top hits the rim I think that was supposed to be a pass but then a foul called on the floor ah, it, that's against Carter that's her fourth now I think it's on Weber so it's it's Weber's second yeah, just to, you got to allow her to come down going up. But again, what's Mississippi State doing? They're, they're trying to get early box outs, and that's what they have to do. They just can't go, just can't take her out and, and take her legs out of front of her. So Cardozo has not been good at the line today. One of four from the free throw line. She's a 58% free throw shooter. She connects on that one, the transfer from Syracuse. In her freshman year at Syracuse, she was the freshman of the year, the co-defensive player of the year. Kind of got her feet under her last year and has been playing very significant minutes for South Carolina this year. And she gives the Gamecocks a seven-point lead. South Carolina's defense has just really picked up, just denying every possession. Carter gets an offensive rebound. Another attempt, and then it's thrown. Whoa, I thought it was off the leg of Weber, but no, it was off South Carolina, so Mississippi State will have the possession again. What a <laughs> battle on the boards. Mississippi State's getting the offensive boards now, but just hadn't been able to finish. Jordan yeah. and Jordan commits an offensive foul you just can't get up in the air you get up in the air in the lane you're, you're it's likely going to be a charge again Brendan you can't I, I love what Mississippi State's doing attacking the basket you can't take it deep because there, there's some there's some big athletes in there so you're not going to be able to shoot over them you either got to go around them or you got to pull up before you get there and take your mid-range jumper. Five seconds in the quarter. Long range shot. No good for Beal. But what a game we've got here in Starkville. Mississippi State had drawn within one, but a six nothing run for South Carolina to end the quarter. Even though I really like TCU, I'm going to have to go with Georgia. What do you got there, Holly? Hey, I'm, I'm for the Bulldogs, but my dog is for TCU. Sugar's ready for the game, aren't you, Sugar? <laughs> I love it. Well, I, I think either way, it's going to be a great quarterback duel. I love Max Duggan of TCU. Of course, Stetson Bennett the fourth, such a terrific uh, quarterback and I think getting by Ohio State last week it's it, it's Georgia's game to win don't you I do I, I I tell you what don't sleep on Georgia's defense they are so solid and they've held peak opponents to just less of uh, fill, uh, points so I, I think this Kirby Smart has done a great job with Georgia and I, I look it's gonna be exciting uh, football game yeah I'm looking forward to it for sure well, we're starting the fourth quarter. South Carolina did not shoot well in the third. They lead by seven, but a nice alley-oop play to set up Jessica Carter. That's what Mississippi State needs. Get shots at the rim for Carter. 
Yeah, Sam Purcell has done a great job coming out of timeouts and getting easy buckets for Mississippi and State. And Carter steals that one away. We went to break, and I mentioned Mississippi State had drawn within one. It was 37 to 36. South Carolina went on a six to nothing run to end the quarter. Here's Mississippi State, tough to throw over Cardoso. Boy, it is got to be right on the money. The great play, just got to go under because Cardozo so long and lengthy. So South Carolina was just two of 18 from the field in the third quarter. They get an easy basket by Cardozo there to get their first score of the fourth. It has not been easy for South Carolina against this Mississippi State defense. It hasn't. And don't you love Cordozo's ability to go under the basket and shoot a layup? And uh, that just shows the talent that South Carolina has. Yeah, it's 6-7. The native of Brazil, she and Boston in there together. Boston playing the four position at the high post. Boston with the offensive rebound. Another one. 19, now 20 offensive rebounds for South Carolina. Just a great anticipation. And knowing where the ball comes off the rim, that's what South Carolina does so well. Shot clock winding down. Beal short gets it to use all the rim to go in. And a nine-point lead for the Gamecocks. You can see the graphic, 20 second chance points for South Carolina. That's even better than their average. They average about 18 and a half second chance points. So even better in today's game. Jessica Carter though, not going away yet and draws the foul on Cardozo. Well, we talked about Jessica Carter's ability to step away and face the basket and that's what she's doing. They're taking away her on block presence She's doing a great job of turning, facing, and scoring. I love that part of her game. She's really developed that, and it's great to see uh, this season for her. Now, what a great story. One of the great stories in all of women's basketball. She very open about mental health struggles and the difficult time she went through last year, but she really appreciates this new coaching staff and believing in her, and she's been playing well as of late. And now she's got the Bulldogs within six points of the number one team in the country. Exactly. It's all about the, the support and the love she's getting. And she says she loves this team. She loves the staff. And, and she just drew really an offensive well. foul. Yeah, she just drew an offensive foul on Cardoza. She kind of had a little bit of a sigh of relief right there. Brenda, she's playing with four fouls. So when she sacrifices her body and... Uh, Hey, she's going to play. It doesn't matter if she has four fouls or what. She's going to play the way she plays. Correction, three fouls, but she's still playing really well and putting her body out there and sacrificing, playing how she plays. Yeah, she's just putting it all out there. An opportunity for Mississippi State driving into the paint and to the trees. And it's knocked out of bounds by South Carolina. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, I love the attack, but you're not going to score over 6-5, six, 6-6. Six, six. Great crowd on hand today in Starkville. Jessica Carter, no, all the way to the rim and not able to finish. Oh, wow. Not going to get that opportunity too often. <laughs> Could have been a four-point ball game, but instead South Carolina with the opportunity. Boston. Look how many double. people are around Boston. Just, wow. D double and triple team she has seen all year long, and a foul on the drive to the basket will send South Carolina back to the free throw line. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> It's like flies attracted to butter, Brenda. It's like she is drawing every fly in the state of Mississippi. So the advantages for South Carolina, we've already talked about the offensive rebounds and the 20 second chance points. 
another advantage is that South Carolina is getting to the free throw line. 21, now 22 attempts, although they're just 12 for 22. But on the other side, Holly, Mississippi State's only been to the free throw line three times all game. Well, a, a credit to South Carolina's defense. I mean, they're playing solid position defense, and uh, when Mississippi State does attack the basket, they're getting blocked. They're taking it a little too deep. It's hard. It's hard to draw a foul because South Carolina's so disciplined in their defensive efforts of defending in the paint. Raven Johnson gets the steal, and the layup by Breezy Hall extends the lead to eight. And Raven Johnson is on the floor. Slow to get up. Don Staley comes out to her aid. Her teammates are around her. And they help her to her feet. Let's take a let's take a look back. Yeah, great steal. We'll just, let's just see what she does. I just I'm sure Dawn is worried about her twisting Ooh. her knee. And, oh. She got a she knee got a, right in the back of her head from Jordan after she stole the ball. So she was on the floor igniting the break. And she will take a seat. And I'm sure they're going to take her to a concussion protocol to make sure that she got pretty hit pretty hard from in the back of the head. Mississippi State down by eight. Anastasia Hayes way off the mark. She's got nine points. No players in, Missi for in Mississippi State's lineup have double figures. Hayes leading the way with nine. Hall, who had that run out layup, is blocked by Jessica Carter. And that's what Jessica Carter does. She's a rim protector. So she just sends that up into the third row. South Carolina is number one in the country in block shots. Mississippi State not far behind. They're number six in the country in block shots. Both these teams in the top three in holding their opponents to low averages. And you can see it on the scoreboard tonight. Jordan has that one blocked by Bree Beal. Just great defense on Mississippi State's end, but just not taking advantage of the, the turnover and probably should have uh, pulled that out or attacked the basket a little quicker. A pass up over the top to Cardozo and uh, kind of didn't realize that she was under the basket and the turnover. South Carolina held to their lowest shooting percentage on the year but they still lead by eight with 4.55 remaining. Welcome back to Starkville, Mississippi. The Bulldogs within eight of the number one team in the country. Sam Purcell got this job last spring and he had to recruit his top players to stay. Anastasia Hayes, Drakela Jordan, Jessica Carter. He went to them and, and showed what he wanted to do with this program. He went to Debrecia Poe's house, the freshman, to make sure they would stay. And he is trying to regain that tradition, retool to get back to where Mississippi State was just a couple of years ago. And boy, they have really shown out here against this tough South Carolina team today. Uh, they are, and they're competing, and that's what he wanted them to do. Com trust him and compete, and they've done a great job today. Both these teams known for their defense, and we certainly see it on the scoreboard. It has been a grind to try to score. And then a foul called on Aaliyah Boston as Elena, or Ilana Smith, excuse me, stepped in to grab the steal. Let's take a look at on the season. South Carolina holding opponents to 43 and a half percent and today or today they are shooting 28 percent and it is a grind Brenda the defense is a grind and, and uh, 
It, it, it's a low scoring game, but you understand it if you watch both teams' de uh, commitment to the defensive end. Jessica Carter steps back. And look at this, we've got a six point ball game. I love that move of Jessica Carter. <laughs> I love, I'm a guard, but I do love post play, and I love when the post can step out and face, and she's got a little fade to her shot right there. The crowd chanting defense. Boston steps yeah. into the paint, little 10-footer. 12 yeah. points for Aaliyah Boston. Cardozo just drew three people, and it leaves Boston open. And Boston's got a great touch on the ball. To the rim, but a foul going to be called on Zaya Cook on the drive, so that basket won't count for Anastasia Hayes. It, it seems like Zaya Cook hasn't. She just came back in the game. I seem like I we yeah. had. She hasn't played as much the second half. I'm. So it's four team fouls. So. That's why Mississippi State took it in, and they get the three-pointer from the corner, corner for Jordan. It's a five-point game. Here we go. South Carolina has Cardozo and Boston in the game. You saw Boston hit that face-up jumper. Cardozo misses her face-up jumper. Let's go state the chant uh, from the crowd and the miss. And a whistle and a foul. So you see Mississippi State attacking the basket and they, there's three around her, kicks out for an open three. Great look by Jordan. Two and a half minutes remaining. Number one team in the country, South Carolina, holding on to a five-point lead. Oh. And it bounces in for Bree Beal. Yeah, Bree Beal. It just seems, Brenda, we haven't called her name a lot, but she's she she hit a three earlier, a shot earlier. Now she hits that big three for South Carolina. Extends the lead. And then a foul called on Cardozo, her third foul. And that's the 15 foul. So we talked about the discrepancy in free throws. Mississippi State's only been to the free throw line three times all game. South Carolina 22. But the Bulldogs going to go to the line here. Jessica Carter, one for one from the line today. Well, it, it is a, a, a big margin, but you... When you attack the basket and you have big people in it, there's, they're not, South Carolina's not fouling. And then on the other end, Mississippi State, smaller, they're, they're, they're getting calls, a lot of backing in to, to uh, block outs and those type of things. So um, I, I think the officials have done a really good job of, of this game and the magnitude it has. And uh, they've called the a travel, really good game today. A travel called on South Carolina. Under two minutes to play. Don Staley's team has had a tough one against Mississippi State. It's been a grind. Up past Boston. Boston definitely affected that shot. Yeah, great play, great attack to the basket, but Boston definitely uh, just had this made her change her angle of her shot. South Carolina has led the entire second half. Mississippi State did draw within one in the third quarter, but South Carolina went on a six to nothing run to end the third quarter. They've stayed ahead here in the fourth, but they have not been able to extend the lead. They've never had a double digit lead in this game. The most they've led against Mississippi State is nine points in this game. Yeah, it's been back and forth, and it's been a battle. It's been a challenge for South Carolina. Well, coming up at 3 the Eastern over is on under ESPN. Review for a shot clock issue. All right, play is under review, but we'll tell you that coming up 
at 3 Eastern over on ESPN. We'll take you to Cincinnati for number two, Houston, taking on the Bearcats in men's basketball. You knew we weren't going to get away with at least one time they went to the score table, Brenda. <laughs> Yeah, our officials today, Denise Brooks, Doug Knight, as well as Kylie Galloway, as Denise and Doug are taking a look at it. Yeah, it didn't hit the rim, I don't think. And so right I love this. I love mm -hmm. they, they can go and review, because it's a crucial time and coaches you know, I, I love that they can, we, we see this and it's at slow motion and we get to review it and, and they're seeing it, you know, at, in game time, game speed. So uh, I love that they can go review. You know, and it's somebody at the Mississippi State scorers table that resets the clock. So the officials are in charge of making sure clock that the- is reset to two seconds. All right, we just heard love that we can hear directly from the officials. Denise Brooks steps in and tells us the shot clock did not need to be reset, and it's at two seconds as South Carolina will inbound it on the baseline. Let's see if they don't go into Cordozo right here to just to try to get a tip or to Boston to. There she is, Cardozo. Too strong, but Carter, Jessica Carter with the rebound. Nice. Inside to Carter. And Mississippi State not going away. They are within six with a minute to play. And a turnover for the Gamecocks. Just brought that, just brought the pressure double teamed and uh, caused a turnover. So here you see a, you're gonna see a ball screen and they switched and when they switch, you get a guard on Carter and she makes it look easy. Jessica Carter was held scoreless in the first half. She's got 11 points and nine rebounds now for Mississippi State. That one almost gets away, and it does from Hayes. She seemed to slip a little bit and lost the basketball. And just going too deep to the basket. Six-point lead for South Carolina, playing keep away. Yeah, you... And then a timeout, Don Staley on the other side of the court. Yeah, Mississippi Holly. State right here. They've got a, they've got, a, they've, got a, they've got a foul, or you know, you want them to foul, but when they, when they throw the ball and bounce, go for the steal. Try to get a turnover. And right now, Mississippi State has a couple of fouls to give, with only two team fouls, so they can be very aggressive right now. Sam, and, and they've got so, plenty of timeouts left, Brenda. So so be smart. No, uh, be smart. Use the, stop the clock. You've got to stop the. You, you've got to con try to control the clock, and that starts with getting steals or, or, or stopping the clock with, with fouls. South Carolina undefeated on the season at 15 and 0, 3 and 0 in SEC play. Mississippi State won their first SEC game against Vanderbilt, but lost at home to Ole Miss and on the road to Tennessee. But they have given South Carolina everything they could handle. And how about that out of the timeout? Nice. How South Carolina just goes for the score. Yeah, I just, just throwing it up. And then Asia Day Johnson misses the layup, and that's pretty much going to do it. Although the foul committed, that's the third team foul for Mississippi State. So South Carolina will inbound it. Well, been impressed with both teams. Mississippi State, their defense has been solid. Uh, just gave up too many offensive rebounds. And then South Carolina just having the fortitude to just, just keep going inside, keep attacking, keep pursuing the basketball. And that's offensive rebounding. Another foul, that's the fourth team foul. So again, South Carolina will have the opportunity to inbound it, but Sam Purcell has to be at least pleased with how his team has played. And he said, we're going through such a tough stretch here, having to play Ole Miss and Tennessee and South Carolina, three games in a row. He said to his team, just stay with me 
and they've certainly shown out today and, and played hard in this game. Well, absolutely. They've had a, this is a rough stretch for them. But uh, they haven't been blown out, Brenda. The, the games have been close. They've done some good things. And, and uh, I, I think through the three games that, they, that they've lost here, is has been involved with not finishing your defense, and that's allowing too many offensive rebounds, and we talked about that. And today is, I think, the difference in the game. The offensive rebounds by South Carolina, 22 offensive rebounds, giving them 20 second-chance points in this game. Mississippi State only with two second-chance points. They almost got a steal on this last play, but the foul sends Zaya Cook to the line, and she'll finish things up. First double-digit lead of the game for South Carolina. That's how close this one has been. A three-pointer for Jordan with 2.2 remaining, and that will do it. South Carolina remains undefeated, 16-0 on the year, 4-0 in conference play. They extend their winning streak to 22 in a row. It's a very impressive game, fun game to do. Challenge, South Carolina was challenged. Mississippi State set, stepped up, just couldn't finish it. South Carolina held on, and that's what number one teams in the country do. They find a way to win. Zia Cook led the way with 16, Aaliyah Boston with 12, and even though South Carolina held to their lowest shooting percentage of the year, 30%, they were still able to get the victory on the road. South Carolina 51, Mississippi State, or South Carolina 58, Mississippi State 51 for the final score here in Starkville. Coming up next, Iowa State and Oklahoma in the Big 12, and we'll send it back to the studio. Alongside Holly Warlick, I'm Brenda Van Lingen. We're going to send it back to Andrea Carter. Our final score, 58 to 51.